under the best of circumstances, love is what brings us into the world. Love is what sustains us with daily provisions, what obliges us to defend others, what reminds us to preserve ourselves. For many, love goes where love already is. But for the radical lover, love goes where love is not. One of the places we don't too often find love is within confrontation. So what does love as a confrontation strategy look like? How can something we associate with affection and tenderness be powerful enough to combat something as provocative and antagonizing as oppression? The message that we must amplify is that we must allow our love for our community to surpass our hatred for our enemy in order to have the most profound impact on the forces and obstacles that anyone fighting for a just cause will encounter. We must aim radical love towards these three things. Towards self as a defensive strategy. Towards cause as an offensive strategy. And towards enemy as a resolution strategy. If your opposition is people or a system that hates you, you must balance their hate for you with love for yourself. By loving yourself, you further realize the degree to which you don't deserve to be subjugated to the burdens of your enemy. This energizes the creativity needed to combat the obstacles that your oppressor has presented. Now, in terms of societal issues, the self not only includes you personally, but also the groups with which you associate yourself. According to renowned psychologist Gordon Alport, the self could not be itself without the groups with which it identifies. Consider Tarana Burke and the Me Too movement. Me Too is this expansion of self because it acknowledges something shared, a shared pain, a shared torment, a shared journey. It is this Ubuntu notion that what impacts you impacts me because we are one. By expanding this notion of self, we are expanding the breadth of our self-love. And this, in turn, broadens our perspective of who all is impacted by our cause. In realizing how much self there is to love and how much self is subject to our opposing force, we realize how much power we have to fight for our cause. This causes love to be a catalyst for an offensive strategy. Your cause is what motivates you to keep moving despite drastic counterforce. You are not going to put up with all the opposition you're going to face unless you absolutely love what you're fighting for. Love is what drives the commitment. And what would be the purpose of committing to your cause if love is not present? But beyond this, to love your cause is a direct act of resistance because the goal of your enemy is to prove that your cause is not worthy. To continue to love your cause, even as your oppressor attempts to demonstrate that your cause is not worthy of attention, of time, of effort, is to contradict the narrative that your oppressor has internalized. Take, for example, Jagmeet Singh, a Sikh politician and lawyer from Canada who, at a recent uh, town hall, was heckled by a woman in the audience. Now, Throughout his political career and his most recent campaign, Singh has stated that the cause he is committed to is love and courage. But in this moment, as this woman yelled racist and anti-Muslim things at him, demanding a response of matched energy and disrespect, Singh took this opportunity to exemplify his commitment to his cause of love and courage by stating, we welcome you, we support you, we love you, taking away the fuel for her display. Even if we were to love ourselves and our cause to the utmost degree of radical love, the goal has never been to maintain a perpetual battle between ourselves, our cause, and our enemy. The main reason why we fight for a just cause is because we want the impediments against this good and righteous cause to cease. Our radical conflicts demand radical resolutions. It is and it has always been a tumultuous time to tell someone to love their enemy. 
When you're fighting to be able to afford overpriced pharmaceuticals for a dying loved one, when you're fighting to free your brothers and sisters from lawfully serving time for crimes they did not commit, when you're fighting to protect your community from becoming the next hashtag in an open shooting, the last thing you want to hear is to love your enemy. But the bottom line is, love isn't a feeling, it's a choice. Love for your enemy isn't a feeling you're going to feel 100% or even 50% of the time, but it is a decision you must make 100% of the time. To love your enemy is to want justice for them as well. Not justice only in the sense of wanting them to be controlled and held accountable within the law, but justice within the sense of wanting them to have the freedom to change their minds, hearts, and ways as human beings. We must acknowledge the fact that if our goal is to love our cause enough to convince our naysayers that our cause is worthy, we must realize that when we achieve this goal, our enemies will have the opportunity to become lovers of our cause as well, making them part of our definition of self, whereby it becomes inarguable that we must love them. We need to realize that through the transformative power of love, we can become our best selves and our enemies can become one of us, which is indeed quite radical. But even if this never happens, the battle wounds inflicted by their continuous oppression will never bring the demise of that immortal being within us that we call love. To love with the tenacity to combat love's opposition is a risk. But if we arm ourselves with this radical love, our oneness will break the strongholds of our respective societies and propel us toward the unity we so desire with our fellow humankind. Love is a gravity that pulls us towards an opposing force that cannot defy the pressure of our very existence. It is the banner we carry into the battle against indifference, and it is the weapon we draw in the duel against hate. The radical lover uses this dows to extinguish the torches of oppressive systems. The radical lover uses this salve to heal and prevent the wounds inflicted by injustice. Before you can weaponize love, you must ask yourself, who do you love? What do you love? Where in these relationships has this love been abused? How can you use radical love to heal and reconcile these relationships? Ladies and gentlemen, arm yourselves with radical love because the revolution is here. Thank you.